Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany, if you're new here. I am currently a physician assistant. I've been certified recently and I just graduated PA school in December. I thought that it'd be helpful if I could make a video on how I passed my boards and became certified on my first try. And so if you are in the same boat as me, if you just graduated and you're preparing for your boards, I hope you find this video insightful and let's just get into it. Before you actually become a practicing PA, you need to pass your boards, which is also known as the pants. And that is the big exam that you need to pass before you can start your job. How did I study for my pants? I made a schedule and I stuck to it. I did give myself some leeway, but for the most part, I wanted to make sure that I was sticking to a schedule and that I would have enough time to review all the material that I wanted to before I actually took the exam. So I scheduled my exam to be in January um, and I started studying in October. So that was a good three months and a couple weeks that I gave myself to study for this exam. The, the pants is 300 questions and you have a minute per question with a 45 minute break um, collectively. So usually you have a break in between each section um, that you can take. There's five blocks of 60 questions and so you have like three breaks that you can take and you can split up those 45 minutes in between those three block those three breaks that you want to take you don't have to take the breaks they're optional but i would highly highly recommend that you do like i was saying before the schedule i will show you on the screen what my schedule looked like it's insane because i am just insane like that but i essentially broke it up into different topics that were on the blueprint for the pants and now you can find this on the um nccpa site and essentially it just tells you the breakdown of the exam, what topics they want you to focus on. They list it out all for you. So if you go through all those topics, you should be good. So on my Google calendar, I set a specific day for each topic. And sometimes I would give myself three days, sometimes two um, to go through a certain topic. And then while I was reading up on those things, I would also be doing my Rosh review questions. And that brings me into the second thing. So when you start using question banks try to keep it simple there are so many question banks out there okay so i'm actually really sad because the majority of my video got cut out but i was talking about your question banks when you choose a question bank stick to one because you don't want to overwhelm yourself there are so many out there there's you world um rosh review you can get books and that's exactly what I did. I I used for the most part Rosh Review. In the beginning, I was very overconfident. I thought that I'd be able to finish all the questions, which I was actually not able to in the end in terms of like doing a book and Rosh Review, but I had a book printed. What I did was I bought the PDF version online and then I went to Staples and I printed this so that I wouldn't have to buy the actual book itself and it was cheaper so it helped a little bit all i'm saying is if you're gonna choose a q bank stick to one and just make sure that you're comfortable with the questions that they're asking how they explain the answers and just familiarize yourself with how they explain things because that's gonna be your way of learning um, when you get the questions wrong on top of that stick to one resource in terms of where your information is coming from it could be your notes it could be pants prep pearls it can be other kaplan pants review books or it could even be the kaplan um like review sessions kind of thing they give you a schedule and you just watch videos and i think you learn from them stick to one resource because when you delve into too many you're going to get confused and um, there's just so many different things that are trying to be fit into your head that if you stick to one thing and you keep with that one resource, things are just going to be clear for you and you won't have to be going into multiple different books and resources and stuff to find your information. Personally, I used Pants Prep Pearls. Um, I, if you guys have watched my clinical videos, you know that I've had this already. And so this was honestly kind of nice that I already had this and I had things annotated from clinical year and that's exactly what I did 
for the pants. I also did the same thing where I went through the blueprint and I crossed out each topic that I needed to read about. Um, and then I annotated if I needed to. Now on top of that, um, while I was reading, I would be simultaneously doing my questions. And then that's how I would figure out this is a category of things that I need to review again. This is stuff that I already know. And that category of things that I already know, you can kind of push aside and say, I don't need to review this again. I don't need to spend as much time on it. But this stuff that I don't know, I want to make sure that I remember. And that's where this notebook comes in. So this is uh, basically my Bible. I split it up into different sections. So I have um, like OBGYN. I also have cardiology and it's it's just basically all of the topics and what I did was I wrote down things that I thought were really important for me to know and this was the only resource that I went back to the last couple of days before my exam because there was no way I was going to be able to read through all the topics again right so those two days before my exam I would sit read through all the things that I wrote in this notebook which is quite a lot because it adds up if you write three to four pages for each topic um I would say it was about this much that I had to read through so it's a big it's a big chunk of information next we are going to talk about how to time yourself this exam is extremely long if I were to compare it, it's more of you preparing for a marathon than preparing for a sprint. Now, if you start out the exam really, really well, like guns blazing, you answer everything to a T and you're just like zooming through, you will get tired. And that's exactly what happened to me. My first two sections, I felt that I could do 120 questions without taking a break and I didn't. Um, but then I started my third section and I was crashing and I had to take a longer break because I was mentally just not in the game anymore. And you don't want to do that to yourself because when you tire yourself out, you're just going to sit there and read the questions over and over again and you're wasting time. So if you can take your breaks, be smart about how you mentally feel um, and know just like this is when I need to take a break, this is when I'm okay and I can go on, then you'll be okay. But just know how to pace yourself and a tip is to take multiple practice exams before your actual pants and mimic those five hour blocks like that you need in order to make sure that you can finish the exam in time, but also so that you know you can finish each block within 60 minutes. And these are my last pieces of advice for you guys. I would highly, highly suggest doing your pants exam as soon as possible after graduating because that's when the information is the most fresh in your head. The way that my school was set up is that our last semester was also our research semester. So we had some time off to kind of focus on studying for boards, but they also gave us some comprehensive exams that we needed to pass and also just for our sake. And so through studying for the pants we were also studying for the comprehensive exam um, and i think it kind of forced us to review everything that we needed to to prepare for the the boards with those paea comprehensive exams that they give you they also give you a breakdown of things that you were the most weak in or what you were average in or what you excelled in so use those um tools to kind of help you to gauge where you need to shift more of your attention to and where you can kind of um, give a backseat to certain topics because uh, the pants is not broken down evenly and what I mean by that is the majority of the pants is cardiology but if you're really really good at something like infectious disease or like nephrology, renal, GU, those topics don't have a as great of a percentage on the exam as cardiology does so if you are not as strong in cardiology you might want to shift more of your your attention to that topic versus id and all the other things um, it's also still important to kind of know those other topics but just know that you're always going to have certain questions that you don't know and it's okay because you can take an educated guess and most of the time you're right but then there's also those questions where it's a complete like 
fact where if you don't know it, you just don't know it. And you just have to take that L, like you're not going to know it if you don't already have it in your brain. So just keep in mind that there's going to be questions like that. Another thing that's in super important to me was to not compare myself to my classmates. It's harder to do than to like to say, honestly, because that's that's like who you've been in school with. It's so easy to talk to your friends and say like, oh, I got this on a practice exam. I don't know what it means. Like, what did you get kind of thing? And as long as you are passing all of your exams in school and you're passing your um, practice exams, you should be a-okay it's honestly super hard to not compare yourself to people because that's just the the human nature of things that's that's how we better ourselves right we want to be better than other people and we want to make sure that we are um challenging ourselves guys everyone has different strengths and what you might be greater in in a certain topic your classmates might be weaker in and so it's not really helpful if you are comparing yourselves to your classmates and i would just say to refrain from that as long as you're studying and you're putting your 100 percent, then that's the end of it like do not try to compare numbers it's only going to make you go crazier and you don't need that going into your exam have trust that your faculty and your education has provided you with enough background that you can pass this exam and that you are capable of doing it and becoming a certified PA. All right, so that is going to be the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. My advice to you is study well, um, focus on what you are not as great in, and have faith in yourself. Like you got through PA school, you can get through this pants exam. And there's so many great things ahead waiting for you starting your job, um, being able to help other people and also just teach other people about the PA profession. I still think that there's a great chunk of people in this population that have no idea what a PA does, but um, I'm so excited to actually be in this profession and kind of spread word on what we do and just how much we can actually help in the medical field. So um, I hope that this video was helpful and I hope that you pass your pants with flying colors. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.